What up, everyone? I wanted to make an air roll video for uh, beginners or people with like kind of a basic idea of how to air roll, but uh, kind of struggling with getting it to a comfortable level where you can just kind of go through the rings maps or these speed trial maps. Um, I want to share with you my experience, what worked for me. Uh, if you, so if you're feeling stuck, this video is for you. Um, if you're on console, this is going to be based a lot around using uh, some some things on PC, namely these, you know, speed trials and the um, the rings maps. So some of the stuff I talk about is still going to apply. Um, you know, you can always do pillars um, or just in free play, but primarily this is direct this is coming from a pc player and it's directed towards uh, pc players so yeah if you want to improve at uh, constant directional air roll uh, this is uh, hopefully going to be a helpful video for you so uh, another thing uh, real quick i am not a professional streamer or youtuber or content creator uh, it took me a few hours to set up uh, my microphone <laughs> and the streaming software and, and get everything right. So uh, I hope you get something out of this. I've, I'm putting effort into this. I want to uh, give back because I, when I was struggling with air roll, I couldn't really find anything um, that encouraged me in the in the right way. It just seemed like Errol seemed like a mystery that I couldn't unlock, and it seemed like I was on this quest <laughs> where, where there were no answers. There were more questions than answers, and, and no one was answering the questions that I had. So hopefully my perspective, uh, I'm, I'm going to have a take that's a little bit different. I'm going to touch on things that you, you might not hear in other videos. And, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Um, first of all, uh, if you look at my controller overlay, you can see my, my thumbstick inputs. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am at the point with air rolling where I don't know what I'm doing with my left thumb. It's All I'm doing is steering. Um, and the, the reason that I can do this is because I have the muscle memory, which I'm sure <laughs> if you're at that point, uh, stuck with air rolling and, and you've done any research, you've heard the term muscle memory. Um, I, I think muscle memory is the key to all of this and something that maybe isn't stressed enough or maybe, you know, uh, yeah, no, maybe no one touched upon it. Um, it's, it's really everything. Like, I remember like this stuff would make me so nervous, like going down at this angle and everything. And I just, I couldn't steer and I would black out and uh, lose control. And um, it's because I didn't have the muscle memory because you have to put your brain, you have to train yourself through all of these different angles, all these different situations, uh, all these different turns to get comfortable enough to the point where you're just doing this naturally. And that's what I'm doing, and that's what I've done. And I'll tell you, this is how I got here. It took me a few months, about an hour a day, of just air roll practice. And we're we're not gonna we're not gonna do rings maps for right now. And the reason is because those little well, we'll just we'll load one up. How about that? We'll do. Uh, Classic Neon Heights. Let's see if I messed up my ball cam. All right, so with the rings maps, you know, you have to drive through the rings. You have to drive on this narrow, if you look ahead there, this kind of narrow, twisty, windy path. It's not, this is good for someone who already knows how to air roll. This is good for practicing to, or to hone your air rolling. This is not good for learning to air roll because 
you're just going to fail. You're going to get up here and you're going to... No one wants to do this for... You don't want to do this for an hour a day for two months. Like, this is why I kept uh, giving up. It's too hard. It's too hard for a beginner. It's too hard for someone that doesn't have a comfortable base of air rolling. It just is. So I, I do air roll left. And let me just show you what it looks like when I do air roll right. I, I have no idea how to do air roll right. So yeah, that's what it would look like if I'm trying to learn how to air roll. And I, I, what I did, I just gave up after a couple of minutes of this. I was like, screw this. Not getting anywhere. And you really aren't. You're not learning anything. Uh, so this was one that I focused on because there's big open spaces that are a lot more forgiving, okay? And the way that I did it, you just wanna, f you wanna keep yourself pointed straight up as much as possible because this gives you the lowest forward momentum, right? We don't want to have to recover from falling in any direction quickly, right? We want to keep it slow. So you're not going to learn how to air roll like, oh. you're not going to be doing this right away, okay? It's just not going to happen. Uh, you have to do this. This is what I had to do. This is where the hours are put in. This is where the muscle memory is made. You're going to keep your nose pointed straight up. You're going to arrow left or right. I'm going to do left because that's what I know. Um, and you're only going to turn when the hood of the car is facing you on the screen, right? So left, right, left, right, left. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards left, right. Uh, if you're watching my inputs, I probably, you know, the muscle memory is literally ingrained in. I can't help but make little other adjustments. But um, when I started, that's what I did. You know, left, right, forward, back. This way, you don't have to memorize or train yourself to, uh, oh, a left turn to right turn and right turn to left turn. Like, Everything's still the same. It makes sense logically in your brain. Left is left, right is right. Forward is forward and back is back. So, and it's going to be slow, okay? It just is. But at least you can get through entire levels. At least you have these big open spaces to recover. And yeah, so I did this for, I, I, I forced myself to do it for like at least an hour was my goal. And if you get bored, you know, throw on a good, A, throw on a good playlist. B, turn your game volume down. Um, C, every 20 minutes or so, throw in a casual match. Don't get sidetracked. Don't just start, don't just not come back to this. You have to be consistent. You have to grind at this. It's going to take you a month or two, okay? If you, you know, depending on if you play four days a week or seven days a week or how much free time you have. But that's the I, that's what I'm calling it, at least what worked for me personally, uh, is the kind of threshold for how much you need to put into this until you get this out of it. Uh, this is a really good level. This one was particularly, I don't know which one this is, if this is third or fourth or something uh, of Speed Trials 1. This one's really good. I'm going to fail intentionally here. Uh, I remember struggling with this so hard, I thought I would never be able to do it quickly. There's a lot of camera angle changes here. Uh, it really messes with your head. It really messes with your depth perception and your, your sense of uh, the center of gravity. And like you'll start doing this. And it, it's hard to recover from. And um, so this one's great. Uh, and I think that, I don't know how intentional this was with Speed Trials 1. 
but it puts you in so many different situations like this, right? That having to do this a couple of hundred times or however many time, times you will end up doing it or however many times I did it, it really is such good training, such good training. So that's just one scenario. Now we've got another scenario. We're going to go up and to the right. We have to control our speed and our momentum. And we have to go back down. And it's just, there's another one coming up. We'll, we'll get to that. But uh, you might think, like, well, why is this even useful to know? It's, it's not that it's useful to know. It's that this is the gym. This is the gym where you're going to train your muscles so that you can react to any scenario. And being able to air roll while descending and going in different directions, that's recovery right there. So uh, this one, again, is just kind of up and down, but with a big constant right turn. And you definitely have to control your speed descending here. Let me go back up. But yeah, I would, you know, there's a lot of this. This is how I got through the whole thing. There is no shortcut. There is no trick. There is only time. I promise you. I promise you. I looked at all the videos. If someone's like, oh, I, I figured it out when I'm doing this, and then I do like a circle motion, and then it all clicked, and suddenly I could air roll. Nonsense. <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. That's such a lie. There, No, there is no. You, there, think of all the different scenarios, all the different angles here. There's not one trick to unlocking this. This is so much to train your brain on. You have to rewire your brain to think this way because the reason, like, the way that I view air rolling now is, I mean, it's just effortless almost. It's um, because I've done all this stuff and I have the muscle memory. There's no way that the, the way that I air roll now that anything could ever just be this one quick thing that I all of a sudden understand and unlock. Uh, so this shaft level is great. Um, this is good. You, and again, even I was like, well, what good is this? What good is this? This is great for when you jump off the wall and go for an aerial and you go for a controlled touch, but you're underneath the ball and you get an air dribble where you're underneath the ball. Uh, once you get that shaft down, uh, you're going to be way better at those air, air dribbles. This one's great just because it's a lot of back and forth, hard 90 degree turns. So you really have to control your speed and uh, just turn properly there. Going left, right, forward, up. And you are going to fail. You're going to fail a lot, but you're going to fail a lot less in this than you will in rings maps. Rings maps are brutally hard. They were made by an SSL. They were made by a former uh, was weapon year pro. I think he was semi pro, whatever. Like that's great left. Uh, but what about us noobs? Um, and even this is pretty hard. This stuff was pretty hard for me to figure out. It'd be better if there were like enormous rings, enormous rings with enormous levels that give you a lot of time and space to adjust your turns um, at least for very the, if you're an absolute beginner I think something like that would be great just to get you familiar with the very basics of air rolling uh, it's really hard for your mind to get wrapped around this constantly spinning thing that you have to steer that changes its directions every single second um, also if you're still watching I am going to teach myself to do air roll right. And I'm going to do it using this method so that we can see exactly how long it takes, uh, exactly how progress is made. Um, it's going to feel like you're not making progress, maybe for even two or three weeks at a time. And it's very easy to give up at that stage. And that's why it took me four years to finally commit to learning to air roll um, and I wish I had done it sooner uh, you have to power through those first couple of weeks where it seems like you're making no progress and it'll go from like like this to like a little 
better, move it a little bit further. You can definitely see more progress that you make at a time than, than on a wing snap. Um, so yeah, speed jump trials one. We've also got all these. Um, I really haven't messed with these too much. Two starts off real hard. So I put that one off for a while because I wasn't getting anything out of it, right? Like I remember when I was a beginner, this shaft was just so difficult. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, binds, curls. Uh, you'll, if you've been watching my left thumbstick, you'll probably see I do a bunch of like little curves. Um, don't worry about trying to figure out like how to do what I'm doing. Your brain will figure this out. Okay, you just have to put it through the stress test i don't want to say stress in like a super negative way but a stress test like you're gonna create some new neural pathways right um so yeah uh but the point i want to make is like i didn't practice doing a, a quarter turn you know for a particular move it just it's just something that your sub you will subconsciously figure that stuff out i promise you i only did like left right forward back i have no idea how or where i picked up those extra movements but you will i didn't see it in a video or anything like that nowhere did i see that it's just something that i did i will say once you kind of graduate past the level of this tight cone thing uh movement here you will start figuring out, and I don't want to sell this as like a trick, like those other videos, but I, I will say this. Um, I do tornado spin a lot to like get my direction correct. And with air roll left, that is down and to the right, uh, generally, or somewhere around there. Or again, I do these little turns that I, I can't really, it's just not something that can be taught. But I will say, I do tornado spin a lot, you know, it's, it's to get to this. So I'll do like this, I'll push to the right and then I'll just let go at the right time. And then I come out of it into this. So like, if that's something you want to focus on while you're practicing this stuff, great. You know, maybe that is the little, the little tip that'll, that'll get you there. But tight turns, let's see here. These are great. This, uh, stuff that re reverses you and you got to slow down and like hover and good stuff but so yeah see like there tornado spin tornado spin let go into a tight spin um, and maybe you'll come up with a whole different technique I don't know maybe there's only a handful of ways to quote unquote properly air roll but uh, yeah so just to try and recap real quick you have to power through you have to trust me when I say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You are making progress. Even when it seems like you are not making progress, your brain is subconsciously figuring this stuff out. I had no idea how to air roll. I could never get it. The only time that I made real significant progress from having to think about my uh, left thumbstick to not thinking about it at all. Here I mess up from talking. I started thinking about it. I started thinking about it. You can't make this shit up. Um, shit, what was I saying? Uh, the only time, the, the only thing that caused me to go from um, having to focus on steering to not at all was dedicating myself to practicing a lot. So, yeah. That's uh, that's it. I will say, um, if you want a ring snap that's a bit more forgiving, I've got this uh, Landon's rings here where you can miss a ring and not get punished for it. It's great. It's great. It's great for getting used to the 
the training method of using rings for air roll, uh, but without the harsh punishment. But doing this like pro level, like make a slight error and die. If you go too low, yeah, you can't fall. It breaks your back. But you know, you can go like over here or up there. Don't know how good of training it is. Um, it's easy to get distracted or bored because you're not like visibly tracking what you're doing so much. But um, I actually never do this one anyway, so I forgot my defenses. Also, uh, I want to give a shout out to Chicken Frick, who was kind of an inspiration. Go check him out on YouTube. Chicken Frick is uh, what I would call grandmaster level freaking air rolling. He is going supersonic with the tightest spins I've ever seen. I literally, when I clicked on it at first, because I was looking up air roll videos once again, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is like a tool assisted speed run. That's, I was like, that's. I guess kind of cool, but pointless. Like, why would you do that for Rocket League? It's not, you know, it's not a video game like Mario for, you know, whatever people speed run. And uh, then I saw like a little mistake, and I was like, "Is this a, is this a person doing this?" And then I watched all his videos, and I was like, "This, this guy is like the best ring snap person ever." So yeah, check check out Chicken Frick on YouTube, and uh, he was a huge inspiration. Um, I asked him how he got so good, and he said, I'm not going to lie to you, it was like two and a half hours a day of practicing for like two years. So it wasn't some trick he figured out. He wasn't naturally good at it. And uh, props to him for being honest and saying, yeah, this takes a long time, like a long time and a lot of practice to get this good. Um that's all there is to it so yeah let me know if uh this uh you know if there was a light bulb moment where you're like okay i get it i actually have to practice can't find you know one one trick to unlock it all let me know if it works for you all right peace see you guys